Well, hey there, my Design Diva lovelies on Facebook, and hey there, my Design Diva gorgeous girls on Instagram. I'm Donna Hoffman. They call me the Interior Design Advocate because I advocate on behalf of my design lovers everywhere. I have thought, taught thousands and thousands of women across the country and beyond with my online courses to help you eliminate the ugly room, eliminate disappointing results, eliminate that feeling of hamana, 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 I don't think I have the itching, nonsense. You have everything you need to be gorgeously successful in your home, except you are missing design strategy. Not the fluff and puff that bloggers put out and the fluff and puff that's out there on Instagram, no talking about strategy, the what, when, how, why, where, that is strategy, like a recipe. So aside from having my wonderful online course business, I actually started out and still am a uh, pretty busy uh, designer here in the Philadelphia region of the United States. We run a luxury interior design company, but I assure you, I'm a regular girl just like you put my panties on one leg at a time. You know, one of the advantages of my working in the luxury end of interior design is that I know all the hacks to make it look like you spent a million bucks when you didn't. So, uh, works to everybody's advantage. So first and foremost, lovelies, how the heck are you? Oh, I hope you're well. I hope COVID is going okay. Our area of the state is now thankfully opening in two weeks. Oh, so glad about that. Let me know how you are. I know depending upon where you are in the U.S. or beyond, you're having different experiences with COVID. Just let me know that you are okay. As long as I know you're okay, I'm ready to dive in and talk to you about accessorizing a small living room. Yes, we have accessories on the brain today. In fact, on Instagram, I put out a question earlier asking you to tell me some of the things you wanted me to talk about. So I already have some of my Insta questions. But let me just make sure you guys are okay. Give me a wave, a kiss, a hello. Let me know you're okay. Uh, I'm getting waves. I'm getting a lot of waves. Everybody's okay. Everybody's doing well. Things are good in Texas. Okay, that's good. Uh, Becky is here. She's saying she's happy to be here. Cheryl says that she's okay. All right, I'm getting waves and smiles, and there you go. So, girlfriends, if you're okay, I'm okay. Let's, des let's dive into some interior design wizardry, shall we? And if you have a question on accessories after I'm done teaching the lesson, I'm glad to take your questions. Just make sure, please, that I don't need to see a picture. If I need to see a picture, I won't answer you. And please keep your question on topic. To be fair to everyone who's tuned in just for accessories today, it wouldn't be fair if you suddenly asked me about, I don't know, how to pick out a carpet. All right, but we'll do a carpet thing some other day. So accessorizing a small living room, what do you need to know? And is it different from accessorizing another room? Well, let's talk about accessories first. So accessories have a massive action. And from where I sit as a design thought leader and as a design coach, I see so many brilliant design lovers, what I call design divas. I see you throwing away the power of your accessories, massively throwing away that power and never even tapping into the, un, un, the locked in power of accessories. They are without a doubt the lowest hanging, lowest cost, stupendous way to invent or reinvent a space. And if you are not harnessing that power or unleashing that power, I'm going to tell you right now, your results are backfiring, your, your, your rooms are falling flat, and part of the reason is you're throwing it all away on accessorization. Do not underestimate the massive power of accessorization. Truly, every designer worth her paycheck knows that there is tremendous gold in those hills. So with accessories, all accessories have an action. And based upon the great, and the great questions that were sent to me, my team gave me, or Steve gave me, because the team's not in yet because we're still on lockdown. Um, I know from your questions that you don't you don't know what you need to know about accessories because of the kinds of questions you're asking me. Smart questions, but there's more to know. But I'll get to those Insta questions. So accessories, guys, have an action. They have action. They're not just static things. So when you ask me, you know, what can I accessorize with other than a bowl and a vase and a book? You're missing the point. Accessories have action. Beyond the fact that they are doing something, they are exerting a number of different influences on your room right now. The room that you're in right now, those accessories are doing something to your eye. 
They are doing something to the room itself. They are doing something to each other. Yeah, they're doing something to your furniture and they're doing something to your walls. If you're not controlling that, you are, again, throwing away a lot of the hidden power of accessories, but you're also shooting yourself in the fabric bolt because your, your results are going to fall flat. So aside from the actions that accessories have, that they are doing something in design, they also are made of different materials. When I say material, a lot of you hear me saying fabric. No, fabric is fabric, but material can be glass, it can be ceramic, it can be porcelain, it can be stone, it can be wicker, or it can be a book, which would be other, it can be organic plant material or some sort of mossy something, dehydrated something. Um, there's metal. Different materials have different action in different spaces. And based upon your design style that you're going for, you want to use a certain mix of materials and avoid others. For example, if you're doing a glam space, you probably won't have wicker in there, right? Or if you're trying to do rustic, you probably won't have a lot of mirror and, uh, you know, mirrored finishes, right? So the material itself starts to broadcast subtly, but accessory after accessory after accessory in one room, it adds up. Those materials are broadcasting a message. They're saying something. So it's a big lesson to teach all of that. There's a lot to talk about here, but just so you know, it's not a book. It's not a vase. It's not a thing. It is a power tool. But here's the kicker. It's not about one accessory. It's about the sum total of all of them together because what's happening on your nightstand relates to what's happening on your dresser, which is relating to what's happening on your side table, which relates to the bench at the foot of your bed, which relates to your carpet. And what happens on your fireplace mantle is actually connected to what's happening on your coffee table, which is connected to your end table, which is connected to your console, which is connected to your upholstery and your fabrics, and on it goes. It's all connected in ways you don't even can't even imagine. So when we talk about designing with accessories for a small living room. Some things to watch out for. First, you've got to edit brutally. No accessory should be in that small living room unless you know exactly what its action is, exactly why it's there. Um, and if you haven't caught on yet to the trick question I posted, what's the difference between accessorizing for a small living room versus a large living room? The answer is not much because the strategies are very much the same. Well, I pose the question, what's the difference between the strategies that you use? So editing brutally, always, always important. Um, it's, it's, it's better to have fewer, more important accessories in a small space than a lot of itty bitty. Um, you should be able to answer the question, why is everything in, in your small living room? It, and I like it, and it looks good there, is not enough. If you like it, that's important, of course. It looks good there is instinct, not anything you're controlling. Let's assume right off the bat that you should like or love everything in every inch of your home. Cracks me up when I see design bloggers saying, you know, one of the keys to having a beautiful home is buy what you love. Well, yeah. Well, what are you supposed to buy stuff you hate? Of course you should love it. So I love this accessory is not a good enough reason for it to be in your small living room. What influence is it, is it adding to that space? What is it working with? Where is it drawing or pulling or pushing or anchoring? Um, and again, it's a larger lesson, so I'm trying to just shorthand this for you. So editing your accessories, being able to justify why every accessory is there in a small living room. Um, when I say fewer accessories, you know, accessories map out into a range of sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large. So small, six inches and below. Medium is like seven to 10 inches. And then large would be, let's say, 11 to 14 inches. Extra large will be, let's say, 15 and over, like 16 plus. So in a small living room, when I see a brilliant design diva with a lot of mid-size and small size accessories, ah, uh, you blew it. You have to have a balance in size and scale that makes sense for the room, but all also makes sense with each other. So be careful. A lot of small accessories, a lot of picture frames, picture frames gone wild, right? That's like, isn't there that thing, uh, you know, I don't know, girls gone wild? Probably a bad analogy. Picture frames gone wild, it's a bad thing. 
So you really want to curate more, more, I was going to say more carefully in a small living room, but it's really, you want to curate no matter what room you're in. Curate as in carefully select what you're putting in there, what you're combining with what, where you're putting it, as well as how you're styling it. Those are the four keys with accessory design. Also, in a small living room in particular, watch the height of what you're putting on your coffee tables. Because when you start to interrupt with too much height, anything above that like seven to eight inch area on a coffee table, you start to break, uh, break apart your seating zone. And in a small living room, you really want that eye to flow well in the room. So you don't want to keep breaking with too much height. Sometimes in a magazine or uh, a catalog, you'll see designers getting jiggy with the heights on coffee tables. Looks good, but it's not livable. And even in a photo shoot in a large space, a large living room, you'll see sometimes designers will get a little jiggy. That's usually for the coffee table for the shoot. Most people don't like living with really tall candlesticks or tall vases or whatever on, on a coffee table. It's just cumbersome. And then the last thing with accessorizing your small living room, I love a good gallery wall as much as everyone else does, but if you really want to do something magical in a small space like a small living room, bigger piece of art versus a smaller piece of art so much better. Oh my gosh, you know what we should have posted? Ah, I didn't. We are, we just came out with a really great artwork cheater guide. I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. It's out. You just don't know how to get it because we haven't told you that yet. I'll talk about that next week. Um, it's a great like 20 page ebook. Um, it, it is not free, but it's really well priced and it t t tells you how to find or create amazing artwork. And when I say create, I don't mean with any talent. I mean with hacks uh, across all budgets and all styles. So anyway, anyway, sorry, I'm sorry, I don't have that. But anyway, let's start taking some questions if you have that, have any. Oh, Steve Hoffman, who's playing the role of Katie until our our team is back in office. Oh, if you want the art, want to see that artwork cheater guide, go to mydesigncpr.com forward slash artwork. It's mydesigncpr.com forward slash artwork. It's a really cool guide. I love it. But anyway, okay. So I have questions that were sent in to me from, um, from Insta earlier today, because I posted a story and said, Hey, here's what I'm talking about. And you know, if you have a question, you know, what do you struggle with? So some people will answer, got a lot of answers, but you're welcome to put in an answer now as well. An answer, a question now as well. So these are picking up too much reflection. Let's try these. How scary is it that I have so many pairs of readers? Anyway, question number one came from L.A. Orange K on Insta. This is a good question. She said, Donna, can you talk about accessorizing in open concept floor plans? Let me tell you something. Open concept is no different in design in so many ways than contained space. From a strategic perspective, strategy is strategy. Strategy for how you put together your color plan, your space plan for, for furniture layout, your, your, your strategy for accessorization, window treatments. The strategies are the same. It's just the way you apply them might alter a little bit for open concept. With open concept, you're looking to use your accessories to move between zones instead of moving between rooms. Do you guys know what I mean by that? In contained concept, you have a living room, a foyer, and a dining room, let's say, the contained spaces, but they open to each other. And then maybe at the back of your home, you've got a kitchen and a family room that aren't open to the front of, the, of your home. Big deal. You're planting seeds in those rooms at the front with accessories that might blow up more, those seeds of color or texture or pattern or whatever. So it's about creating a through line so that you are thinking room to room to room and contain space. Well, LA, Orange K, in open concept, you're thinking about bouncing people between zones. The zone that is your great room, the zone that is your foyer, the zone that is your kitchen, whatever zones are opening to each other. So it's so much easier when you know the strategy of moving, moving pattern, moving the eye, moving texture. Um, connecting spaces, driving the eye someplace. So you simply want to get rid of the pressure that, oh my gosh, it's open concept. 
It's why is the accessory here? Where am I driving the eye? Am I planting up an important color here? How many times do I need to jump this color? It's, I, I highly recommend that you get your hands on some great design strategy for accessories. In fact, I posted a link on Facebook. I have a great um, online course called Design CPR, Creating Perfect Rooms with Accessories. I dive into all of these um, accessory strategies. It's too much to cover in a, in a live like this, but it's so powerful. So if what I've given you just now, LA, Orange K, wasn't enough, you may want to either follow, send in a follow-up, more specific follow-up question, or check out that online course. And I posted a link for it uh, for you guys in um, Facebook. Um, another question that was sent in early was, what do you do with limited wall space? You put less up on the wall. You know, architecture drives your accessorization. In fact, your furniture placement really drives your accessorization, which is a shock to most people. But um, you don't have wall space. Well, you're not putting up as much artwork. That just that's uh, that is a phenomenon of so many of the new home builds today, and also the um, it's a, it's an issue with open concept again, which is not going away. Let me take a couple of Facebook questions. I'm getting thumbs up and hellos from Debbie in Alabama. Hello there, Debbie. And Joe is saying, hello, my husband is home from the hospital. All good. Oh, Joe, your husband had COVID. I am so glad that he is back. Give him, I think we all agree, we're sending Joe's husband some healing vibes and a big hug. Huh? Yes. Sally is saying, hi, hello, Sally. Jennifer McCann is saying, I love accessories. Girl, after my own heart. I love it. Um, Joe is saying, how do you accessorize a credenza? below a 65 inch ugly wall TV to hide the sound bar. You don't really be careful about over accessorizing those credenzas that are media consoles. You can accessorize a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. I wouldn't do a ton underneath. And if you do, it's low, it's, it's, a, it's a long dish, it's a long tray. It's about where you're moving the eye. Guys, accessories have a number of actions. One of those actions is to pull the eye someplace. You don't want to compete with that flat screen as a part of that wall. You're just looking to perhaps create a little weight on either side. Um, doesn't have to be a symmetrical setup, Joe. It depends upon your design fingerprint. Um, but and and a TV, a TV mantle. I get that question a lot too. How do you accessorize a mantle when there's a TV? Nominally, if if at all, depends upon the room, the depth of the mantle, how wide the mantle is beyond the TV as well. So um, getting hellos from Ohio from Dawn. Hi, Dawn. And Karen in Texas. Hello, Karen in Texas. Um, uh, Tree is saying, good information. I'm so glad, Tree. Um, Loretta is saying, hello from South Jersey. I think you're shut down. Oh, no, I think you're opening up down in South Jersey. Um, Indiana is saying hello. I'm getting all these hellos. Okay. How do you incorporate from Karen Randall Ruffner? How do you incorporate photos into decorating. Karen, what a good question. I get this question constantly. All right. Did you ever look at the, 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 the rule of repetition? It's important, right? Repeating something makes it more important. However, when you repeat too much of it, it becomes unimportant. So when photos, family photos, there are just too many of them everywhere, nothing becomes important. For example, if on a side table you just have a whole collection of family photos, we just see a whole bunch of stuff on that side table. No one photo moves out to greet us. Now, that might just be there to give your heart and soul a hug because you want to see the faces of your family, your friends, pictures of you where you look fantastic and your hiney looks small and your hips look little, you know, yeah, have those pictures out. But be selective in a small living room in particular, how many pictures, I think three to five is plenty. And no matter what room you're in, I think three to five is good um, as a rule, not a, an, as a tool, not a rule, right? Um, make sure though that you are Sharon, um, no, wrong, I'm sorry, did you, wrong name. Sharon is, not asking that question. Who is asking that question about accessorizing with picture frames? Oh my gosh, I lost it already. Oh, Karen, I'm sorry. Um, Karen, try to unify those frames so that they are all in a similar, similar color range, similar material. It's when you have a million different materials, especially if they don't belong in the room you're in, gets even more important. 
Um, doesn't all have to be the same frame. I'm not saying that, but are you in silvers and blacks? Are you in golds and silvers? Are you in golds with and some black frames? Like, where are you? Um, do not hang those 11 by 14 images on a wall, unless you're doing a whole photo wall. Don't even order the 11 by 14 graduation photo. Order an 8 by 10. That's, that's the highest, the tallest framed image you want as, as a photograph. Um, so the other thing you can do, Karen, if you have a lot of photos and you know, and you just can't part with, you know, not showing all of them or your, I don't know, one of your in-laws will be pissed off if you don't have, oh, I shouldn't say that, will be angry, upset if you, you know, don't have their picture out, get a photo frame and program it a bunch of stuff and it'll just sort of tick through and when company comes, you plug that sucker in and you're covered. There it is. Luckily, I don't have that problem with my in-laws in case they're watching. All right, um, Steve's laughing. Uh, getting more hellos from West Virginia, from Georgia. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Angie. How are you? Um, okay, Tree is saying that she's in North Jersey and she's saying hi to Loretta. I'm just the messenger now. Uh, hello from North Carolina. Okay, so on is back to Instagram. Okay, Mindy asks this great question. But Mindy, based upon the question, I know you're missing design strategy. Not calling you out. Um, I'm calling you out a little bit. Mindy wants to know what objects can you use? I'm tired of vases and lamps and candles and books and bowls. Mindy, if, if they're just objects to you, you're missing the whole point of, of accessorization. It's about the sum total, what they're all doing in a grouping and what they're all doing in a room. So everything you mentioned is important, but it's not the end of the story. And if you know why you're using what you're using, you won't be bored with the books, the bowls, the lamps, the vases, the, the, the candles. Um, so I, I don't mean to give you a non-answer answer, but if you were, if I was doing a, if I was teaching a bunch of young designers launching into the design industry, I, I'd answer in the exact same way. And then I teach them what they need to know, uh, which is a bigger conversation than what we have here. Uh, flippant answer, uh, you could throw some plant material in there or freeze dried plant material, a really good faux plant material in there. There are trays, um, there are decorative boxes. It, it's about, again, the sum total of the objects, the shape of the object itself, the color of the object. You know, I, I remember a student, a design lover, who not, not a professional, asking me, you know, I get confused with, with um, accessories, she said, because aren't they supposed to do something? I said, what do you mean? She didn't know, like, hold something like a box you can hold, put stuff into, or, a, you know, a, 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 a tri um, not a trivet, a, what the heck, losing my marbles, a coaster, you know, you could put a, a glass on. I said, well, yeah, those are functional in terms of usage, but accessories are very functional. Even Mindy's candles and lamps and books and so forth, they're functional in terms of their aesthetic power, which is huge. I'm going to tell you right now, and if you've spent any time with me before, you, you've heard me say this before, but it bears repeating. I, I've worked with clients who, you know, we get all the furniture and the rugs in on delivery day. That's the first, you know, crew that comes in, the rugs, the window treatments, and they're excited. And then they look around and go, oh, it looks kind of cold, it looks kind of undone. You bet it does. Until you accessorize a space, I don't care what you spent on the furniture and the rugs, until those accessories are in, it looks like a half-baked cake, cold, undone, underdone. So, Mindy, it's the sum total of all those objects that adds up to the power. No one object is the star. Um, and hopefully I've given you some other ideas, uh, baskets, so, you know, some other objects of beauty that you can use as well. Uh, let me take another Facebook question. Uh, da, 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 did I miss anybody? Sharon, da, da, da. thanks for the info. I needed this webinar since I downsized to a condo. Um, this is actually not even a webinar. This is a, we just do this. This is a Facebook Live and Insta Live. We do. I do this every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Put a pin in it here at our design studio, and I come up here and talk to you. Um, but I'm glad you love it. Uh, Mickey's saying I like brass figures, and I like to scatter it around the room. How many? Times is it okay to repeat an element without being an it being overwhelming? Mickey, such a smart question. I would like to see a picture to be able to answer you well. Without seeing a question, uh, uh, without seeing a, a picture, uh, three times, 
three to three to four times, maybe that's it. I'd like to see how little these brass figures are to really be able to answer you well. I, I, that's a very flippant kind of quick answer. Like that's like a blog answer I just gave you. I would love to see you get a hold of design strategy because the fact that you're asking that question tells me that you are a wise design thinking woman. So strategy, you would fly with it. You would really fly with it. So I, I hope you'll find a good teacher who can give you all the strategic know-how that you need. Um, so, all right. So, uh, da, 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 other questions. Um, M MR Shill 2018 asked me how to accessorize shelves with a fireplace in the middle. I don't even totally understand what you're describing, and I would need to see a picture to answer you well there. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Carol Shrapko asked about fireplace mantles. Too general a question. There are so many things you can do. You can be doing an asymmetrical setup, a symmetrical setup. Um, everything from leaning artwork to hung artwork to stacked artwork to no artwork at all to objects of beauty but it's it's what you combine where you place it how you style it period end of story and what you select also the scale has to be right on a fireplace mantle too lots of itty bitty doesn't work um let's see so you yulia it, on Instagram is asking me, can you combine framed and unframed canvas art and photos? You bet. Yes, you can. Have to see a picture to give you a definitive on that to tell you whether I think what you're working with works. But yeah, I do that in an open concept constantly or even in the same room. I may not have it all hung together, but if I'm doing boho, I might hang it all together. Um, let's see what Facebook is saying. And Insta, I have more questions coming in from Insta. Kathy is saying, do you find that incorporating different textures and accessories helps? You bet it does. Absolutely. You know, when you look at catalog pages, when you look at not excellent spaces done by, um, by showrooms like, like, uh, uh, like furniture stores, we had a design conference, the Design Diva conference, and I was showing my peeps at the conference, one of the workshops, I was showing them how to identify a well-nuanced, well-textured space. Because at first I looked at some images and said, oh yeah, that's good looking. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. And then other people say, well, it looks good, but it's kind of flat because it wasn't textured. It wasn't nuanced. And accessories are a great way to nuance by changing up those materials. That's what I was saying earlier about it's what you select, what goes with what, what works with a particular design style, uh, what works with the other textures in the room and colors and patterns in the room. So layering that is definitely important to do. Um, it feels tough and advanced to do until you know the strategies, but it's certainly what a professional designer does, like, like, like breathing. Very important. So that's a, that's a great, great question that you, that you asked, Kathy. Great question. Um, from Instagram, just me, I, you, L Ivy. Ivy League. I'm sorry, just me, Ivy League. Hi, love all this info. What's your, what are your thoughts on hanging medium and large mirrors. I love hanging mirror, medium size, great, large. I like to either hang it or I lean it. By large, I mean like 70 to 85 inches tall, right? That That's large. Um, but if you if you lean it, what you really have to do, guys, is you you kind of lean, you make it look like it's leaning against the wall, but behind back here, we install cup hooks and then we wire it so that if a dog or a child, you know, or a vacuum cleaner wax into this mirror, it's not going to, it's not going to wobble. So there you go. Great question. Um, let's see what else Becky is saying. What about accessories on the floor, like plants, baskets, art pieces, how much and what size? Oh, Becky, you know, it's really cool. I'm glad you asked this. Um, Kips Bay is a fantastic show house that happens in New York. It's one of the leading show houses in Manhattan, in the country. It happens in Manhattan every year, except for this one because of COVID. It was shut down. But I remember two years ago seeing uh, a young designer. He really like, stepped out with doing a lot of stacked artwork, but it was a lot of it on the floor. It was cool as anything. Uh, it was a very kind of edgy looking space. So I think in the right context, I, I think, uh, you know, accessorization on a floor makes sense if it makes sense in the context of the room. If you need weight in a particular area, you have to watch the size of, of your items. Please with plants, same thing with um, 
picture frames like a little bit goes a long way don't be the cat lady don't be the don't be the bag lady don't be the plant lady we just have like a million plants everywhere so uh, i think again always pick and choose those accessories wisely and carefully but um yeah on a fireplace hearth in the corner of a room um yeah an accessory on the floor floor plant maybe a floor plant with something near it can be great um and i'm telling you what stacked artwork on a floor can sometimes be very cool looking so there it is i wish i wish i wish i wish i could take you in my pocket to the show house every year i would love to just lead a class through there and just do design lesson and bond design lesson but i'd get shut down it's just it's too squishy in these 30 million dollar you know uh townhouses that are front to back um they're beautiful, they're big, they're pricey, but it gets squishy in there with a lot of people. So there it is. All right, so I'm losing my place here. So let's do another Insta question. Would love to see before and after photos of accessories you've added. Jenny, um, I have a really great course, Design CPR, Creating Perfect Rooms with Accessories. You, you will see a lot of before and afters in that. And I also have a workshop right now that I'm doing on accessories that um where i do show some before and after and the power of accessorization and i'm working on a new workshop for accessories that i am loving to bits so i don't have any pictures to show you right now though doll but i appreciate that i don't i will be honest with you i don't get very visual in these facebook lives um in the videos that we post to youtube youtube here it is videos on youtube we do get visual um and and on instagram we what we post there we get really visual there too but during these Facebook Lives, um, and in my courses, I'm very visual, online courses, which are very big, big projects for me to put together. These Facebook Lives are about quick lessons that I come out, can come out and teach you. So they're not as visual. And I sometimes hear you guys type, or you hear you say when you type to me, I'm a very visual learner. Perfect. Head over to one of my courses or head over to our YouTube channel. So let's see what else um, Facebook gorgeous design divas are saying. Um... Steve, you're making me nervous. You're throwing over so many questions. Huh, I need a fake vodka tonic here. It's just tonic water. Ah, so good. All right. Who am I missing? Okay, so Leslie from the is saying, hey, I want to incorporate plants in my living room. What is the best way to group two or three plants? Don't. I wouldn't group plants. Sorry to say, Leslie. Leslie, I love you enough to tell you what I think, not what I think you want to hear. Uh, I don't. I am not into the whole plant grouping thing. If you have to do it, levels, something in a taller, something, something and something smaller. I wouldn't do a lot of that. I would do it maybe once, maybe two plants in one area. So floor plant something up someplace else. That to me sounds like enough, feels like enough in a space. But I'm giving you opinion now. But um, if I were teaching a young designer, I would give her this or uh, him this advice as well. Uh, Lori is saying, I'll have to catch the replay. Busy being grandma today. Sounds like fun, Lori. Um, Lori is also saying I need help with lamps for side tables next to the sofa. The size I should use stumps me. Depends, Lori, on, and Lori's asking about lamps. Are lamps an accessory? Yes, they are. They're kind of a hybrid. They're part accessory, part furniture item because they are functional, right? They, they throw light, but no way to ignore the fact that they are part of the jewelry of a room and they have a lot to say. Um, yeah, lamp heights get to be something to consider. Most most lamps next to a a, a, a sofa are going to be anywhere from 28 tall, 25 to 28, maybe 30. It's when you get into those really tall, you know, buffet lamps, you know, 36s, that's more buffet. And then like on my desk right now, I have a really cute, you know, 18 inch little cute pretty thing. It's there more for pretty than it is for anything else. So hopefully that helps you on your lamp sizes. We, I go into all of this in so much more detail inside of Design CPR. In fact, everything we're talking about, I go into and roll it out very fully, strategically. So I hope you'll check out that, that course. It's really the bomb. So, oh my gosh. So um, what are your thoughts from Jen Keller Aesthetics? What are your thoughts on a boldly painted navy blue deep green accent wall? It is so funny you're asking me this about this, Jen Keller. You know, inside of Design CPR Creating Perfect Rooms, I had this fight with myself, this debate. I wanted to include a module in there that helps you quickly discover 
A if your wall color is right because your accessories are, are talking to your wall color. They're either yelling at your wall color or vice versa. And the wall color is either working in the room or not. And I also get so many questions about accent walls and how to do them well because this is one of the most often screwed up things out there. And I almost, I don't know, should I include it? This, is, this, is, this course is about a system to quickly facelift a room with accessories. But I thought so many of you want to do these quick, easy flourishes, which is an accent wall or an accent ceiling. So I included it in the course. Even though I know it might be confusing when you say, hey, this is about accessories. Why is there something in there on paint? I was just looking at some of the copy that's going to go onto the website. Um, so I'm kind of cracking up that you would even ask me about this during an accessory um, thing, but I'm going to answer it because I do think that accent walls kind of function as an accessory in a room. So I think a boldly painted access, uh, accessory like uh, accent wall in a navy blue, maybe with a little bit of a sheen to it, or deep green, green, maybe with a little sheen to it, depending upon your design style. Spectacular looking, but you have to be able to tell me why you need that accent wall. What is it doing? What rhythm is it putting into the room? What color is it putting into? Why? Where is that color coming from? You know, where else is it in the space? Something I get into in Design CPR, because I think accent walls and accent color on the ceiling is a great, fast, low-cost, accessorizing-esque type of hack. So Jen, without seeing your total space and your designer, it sounds like, um, I would love to see what you're working on. If you're in one of my courses, you, you know that all of my courses have a private members only Facebook group attached to them, which is why I can see what you're working on. My team can see what you're working on. The whole community can too. So that's the only way for you to send me a picture. What Donna Hoffman? I can't just, you know, DM you or email you no because there are way more of you than there are of me and i just don't have the bandwidth with all the design i'm doing here in my design studio for our clients and our team to also just do kind of quick on the fly design for people so it's limited to pictures or limited to my students so i hope that helps you jen because uh you know as a topic i bless it i think you're okay but i'd want to see it um bum 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 angie is saying what are your thoughts on kitchen tables with placemats and plates on them all the time as decor uh -uh. I don't like it. I think it's very stagey looking. It's very uh, showroom looking. Uh, I would much rather just see you have a beautiful centerpiece if you feel that you need that. Um, and placemats, I don't think they're pretty enough to just leave out all the time. I usually would prefer to see them stacked in the center of a table. Maybe something is on top of that. Or just put them in a drawer someplace till you're ready to take them out and use them. That is my thing. I don't, I get people asking me about keeping their dining room set up all the time. One of my best girlfriends in the world does it. She knows I don't like it, but it's her home, not mine. But is it something uh, a luxury designer would ever do for a high-end look? Nope. Nope and nope and more nope. Um, Jennifer McCann is saying that design CPR is fantastic. Thank you, Jennifer. I've seen what Jennifer has done. And I actually... Um, I'm so proud. We've tweeted some of what, what, she, what she's done. She's really done great things with that course. So thank you, Jen. Um, Kimberly Rose McKee is saying, how many colors are too many in a color scheme for the whole house? Kimberly, kind of off topic, trying to stay on topic. Um, that's a big question. Great question. I kind of cover that in a deep dive in my design decorating genius course, where I go into how to decorate a room from, you know, from scratch or two thirds of the way in or a third of the way in. Um, I, I want to try to stay on topic because we're getting so many, you know, accessory questions. So sending you a kiss instead of an answer. Joe is saying, do you need the same metal and accessories as in furniture, hardware, and lighting fixtures? Um, you can vary up your materials quite a bit more, Joe. 80-20 rule is always safe. You can do 70-30, you know, 70-20-10 rule if you want. But it um, doesn't have to all be the same. In fact, I prefer that it's not all the same. That's how a, a, a designer would do it. Elaine Rosen is saying, how do you style a chest under a TV? Something low and centered. We just kind of answered this question, Elaine. Um, maybe you're just tuning in a little late. Um, I have to see a picture to be able to tell you exactly what to do in your case. But um, uh, over accessorizing around a TV always looks odd because there's a reason for accessories to be there. Why are you pulling weight and the eye to an area? So I would do fewer, more important things and maybe larger, but but you know, beefier kinds of things, and of course stay, steer clear of the TV, but doing something super, um, what's the word, super symmetrical 
could look strange. Um, I'd like to see what you're, what you have. Um, I shouldn't say it would look strange. Could look a little too deliberate or overly designed. So I'd want to, I'd want to see it, um, to be able to answer you well. Steve is telling me last two questions were kind of going long here. All right. Um, Kimberly's ask. I'm going to try to get, instead of doing follow-up questions, I see Kimberly is putting in another question. I'm going to try to get to people who haven't even asked one question yet. So Anna Von Simpson, hi Donna, could you please leave, leave here the access to your new accessory workshop that you mentioned at the beginning of the session? My new accessory workshop is not out yet. I'm, we're thinking, when are we thinking we're going to be able to launch that? Maybe in June? Maybe in June, which is very soon. I'll let you know when it's available, Steve said. Um, but my course, Design CPR, Creating Perfect Rooms, if you just want to dive in and, and get everything you need to know, definitely go to the course. There's only so much I can cover in a workshop, certainly more than I'm covering here. But if you just want to do it, Design CPR is designed to give you results in as little as four hours as much as two weeks or four weeks. You choose what kind of project you want to do and I walk you through it. In fact, right now, if you go to the link I posted and then you also go to our blog, we have a 20% off coupon right now for Design CPR and we're keeping that active. We were going to keep that, that coupon up just for like, I don't know, a month when we first put it up, but I would really wanted to reward my Design Divas, the people who follow us and the people who who come to our blog. Um, so that's just our little way of doing that. So that would be my answer to you, Anna. And check back. We'll let you know when the new workshop, the new free workshop is up. And I've got some good stuff planted in that free workshop as well. And in that workshop, I also talk about the, the guts of what's in Design CPR too. Fran is saying, Donna, you're an angel on my shoulder as I struggle to create my home office. Thank you. I'm so glad our information, everything I'm teaching is helping you, Fran. So, so glad. Um, these are off topic, so I'm not going to take those. Um, what do you, okay, Rosie is saying, what do you put on a large, tall wall with a cedar ceiling? Rosie, babes, I got to see your space to be able to tell you, but you want something big. You know, you want something big. Um, or are you doing a really important photo wall where you've converted everything, let's say, to black and white to unify everything and framed everything in a similar frame, so now you're making one larger mo motion or movement? You know, Artwork should be hung in relationship to the thing it's over or near. It should be sized proportionally for the thing it's near or next to. And if it's on a bare wall, it needs to be proportional to the wall itself. Okay, so hopefully that helps you. Am I over my two-question limit? Oh, he's letting me go long. Let's keep going. All right. Um, okay. Uh, Kimberly, don't apologize. Kim said she's sorry that she missed the topic. Kimberly. We're all friends here. We're all design divas. No problemo. Not a problem. Jennifer Hayes is saying, how do you accessorize above or inside of a media armoire? Oh, the above the armoire thing. Uh, I don't love it. If you are going to do it, make it big. You know, like maybe like open lantern-y things, a basket-y something sort of set up. Uh, no little itty-bitty things. But I'd ask yourself, Jennifer, do you need to accessorize up there? Honestly. Maybe what you need is a great piece of artwork hung to the right or the left of that armoire. Steve, you're making me nervous asking all these questions. Okay. Um, I, I, when I see brilliant design divas like you guys throwing accessories in places where I think you need that there, I know that you recognize that there's a balance that's off in your room and you're trying to correct it, but you don't know how to correct it. The top of your armoire is like the last place that you need to use to correct what's going on in your room when the weight and the balance is off. That's the, that's the best answer I can give you without taking another few hours to teach you everything you need to know about accessories. But I invite you to check out one of my free uh, webinars, workshops, or go right into Design CPR Well, you'll get everything you need. To, so you won't even, that won't even be an issue for you, uh, not even at all. Um, A.S. Culbert, Angie, is saying, can you repeat the coupon links? Yes, Angie. So if you go to theinteriordesignadvocate.com, that's my website, go to the Learn With Me tab and scroll down to learn about Design CPR. That's where you'll learn about the course. Design CPR, creating perfect rooms with accessories. It is phenomenal. And then if you like it, go over to the blog 
the blog tab because at the on the corner on the edge of the blog page we have current coupon codes for any one of my courses with 20% off and with everybody spending more time at home right now I know beautifying your home which adds more grace and ease to your home I know that's really important to so many of you so we said you know what let's just let these coupons ride and help people through this moment right now um, and again we just love rewarding the people giving you a hug back uh, because you're one of my peeps one of my followers so if you like the way I teach during these Facebook lives I think you'll love my courses when I can get really visual and go into all the details and in design CPR I have you stop the video sometimes and go try out something that I've just taught so you can get some really quick wins going and you don't have to spend any money buying any new things you decide if you want new things you decide how many new things you want if at all all right so there you go all right girlfriends um curtain rods are they considered accessories should should the finishes on the curtain rods be the same finish as the hardware in the room such as doorknobs on the on the furniture the, the, the knobs on the furniture it's a really good question oh, window treatment design and selection is a whole other topic it's a deep topic short answer for you Debbie is that your your rod has to relate to the treatment itself the fabric of that treatment and it has to somehow be saying something in the room do you want it to whisper? Well, then you might want it to be very light and recede and just kind of fade. Do you want it to come forward? For example, I'm working on a living room right now where splashing some black accents through the room is important. So yeah, I know. I haven't even designed the window treatment yet, but I know there are going to be black rods in that, in that space. So it should relate first and foremost to the window treatment in total, but the window treatment in total has to relate to everything else in the room. I wouldn't worry about all every knob on your furniture. Um, they should make sense in the context of the room, but if there's an off player there, that can fade a little bit as a furniture knob. But your your rods should definitely be considered more of an ex, to your to your point maybe more of an accessory consideration. But it's really linked to your window treatment and how that total treatment treatment and rod. <clears throat> fat calculate into your room. All right, dolls, listen, if you missed any section of this, YouTube, you can always find our Facebook Lives rebroadcast on YouTube. Of course, it'll stay live for a little bit on Facebook and on Insta. And then um, if you're not following us on on Instagram, you know, you're missing the party. And this, that just find us um, at decorating.genius. That's at decorating.genius. Yeah, that's it. And then next week, you know what we're talking about next week? I didn't even tell you. How to avoid hiring the nightmare subcontractor. Yes, how to avoid hiring the nightmare subcontractor. You do not want to miss this. And you know what I loved about today, aside from being with you guys? I broadcast on Instagram this morning what I was going to talk about today. So you were able to send me some questions because I gave you the option to send me questions, which never thought of doing that before. I'm sorry. So I think we should do this again where I give you a little heads up on what we're talking about. This way, if you have a girlfriend who needs that topic, you can tell her. And this way, if you have a question you want to input for me, you see, I got to those kind of quick. So that could be good too. All right, dolls. So next week, 4 p.m. Eastern here, Tuesday, every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern. But next week, we're talking about how to avoid hiring the nightmare subcontractor because they're out there and I want you to avoid them. All right, dolls, I will see you soon. Big hugs, big kisses to everybody. Stay healthy and stay good and whole and happy. I'll, t I'll see you next week. Bye. Hi, this is Donna. Thanks so much for watching. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and comment below so I know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe to the Interior Design Advocates channel so you don't miss any of our great content.